up, boys and ghouls. It's your favorite horror heathen of the Horror Heathen YouTube channel in the South Jersey Horror Podcast. Today, I have a very special and honored guest, Mr. Ken Kurzinger, who is the stuntman of all stuntmans in horror movies and very impressive resume. So if you ever get a chance to look him up on IMDb, please do, because you're going to have the same reaction as I did. Um, and my reaction was, holy fucking shit, this guy is the shit. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So, born November 4th, 1959 in Saskatchewan, Canada, you started your career as an actor in 1983 when you were just a, a, a young 20, I remember, I don't remember being 24, I really don't, <laughs> that was over That was over 20 years ago, yeah. so you became more successful in your profession with a limited period of time, you were, you were influenced, you influenced other people on the basis of your career and you earned a lot of fame. Um, after a while, your career completed a full circle as you gained more importance. So, in other words, people wanted you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you are best known for your portrayals as Jason Voorhees and Freddy vs. Jason, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. I, it's it's a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, you are Wrong Turn 2. You played Pa. Uh, wrong Turn 2, Dead End. And Rusty Nail in Joyride 3, Roadkill. And you also played Mason Jason Voorhees, which I still have not seen the spoof. And I, I feel guilty for not seeing that because I love horror movies. I love parodies. Right. Um, you're also either associated with stunts or an actor in some of the most notable horror movies. The Cabin in the Woods, Dreamcatcher, 13 Ghosts, Bad Moon, Hideaway, Watchers, and one of my favorite action movies ever, The 13th Warrior. So, how you doing? This is great. Thank you so much for joining me today. This is fantastic. Hey, it's my pleasure. Thanks for uh, thanks for the great introduction. Um, yeah, no, I, uh, stunts has been a big part of my life for a long time, and uh, I'm retired from it now. But uh, um, I look back on all those things you just mentioned, and and uh, had a lot of fun doing all those shows, and and uh, especially Thirteenth Warrior was probably one of the hardest projects I ever worked on, but. Uh, it's like I told the stunt guys when we were working on it. I said, "This will be one you, you'll you'll be glad you did when it's done." Uh, we worked six days a week on that. We were out of town on location uh, up in Campbell River for months on end, and living on about four hours of sleep. But uh, I uh, I look back on that movie as uh, very fondly. So, what was your uh, what part did you play in that in Thirteenth Warrior? Well, I was I was actually one of the uh, stunt coordinators on it. And uh, I was also doubling um, uh, the lead Viking. Uh, um, can't remember his name right now, but uh, yeah, I was doubling uh, the the long blonde haired Viking in it. Uh, I can't remember his name right now. It's slipping my mind. But I got to do lots of fun stuff: uh, riding horses, swinging swords, uh, planning battle scenes, um, choreographing some of the the, the uh, big fight scenes. Um, and it was, uh, like I say, we had tons of stunt people working on that. It was a big job to organize it all. or And uh, we had a, a lot of fun and play uh, making it. Hello. Sure. Okay, so you were talking about the 13th Warrior. Yeah, 13th Warrior was, we worked six days a week. I think we were doing like minimum 16-hour days on that thing. And uh, but we were on location with a bunch of... Uh, you know, we had 50, 60 stunt people working in some days, and um, it was just a lot of work. But uh, I think we felt like we were working on something. It was it's a, it was a special movie for us because we got to have so much fun as stunt people on it. And um, anytime you get to, you know, do get on horseback and swing swords and, <laughs> and uh, you know, play like your little kids when you're grown adults and you're getting paid well for it, uh, it's a great day. That's awesome. Listen, it's one of my favorite movies. Um, it's what got me into the Viking culture because oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's very fascinating. And my wife one day is like, "Let's be Viking." Is like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to think. I think that might have been the only Viking movie I ever got to do. Um, you know, we got I got to do a lot of uh, sword and sandal work. Uh, we call it over the years, but. Uh, but that one was that one was really special. Um, you know, we, it turned out well, and 
Uh, I, I don't know how well it did at the box office when it first came out, but I get a lot of people approaching me saying that they really love that movie. It, it is. Like Legends of the Fall is a, is another big one. Uh, people catch me. I get killed at the, the end of Legends of the Fall. And uh, people see that uh, the big shootout at the end, and they often remind me of that movie and how much they liked it. And it, it's a great movie. Like I said, it's one of my favorites. It's another guilty pleasure of mine. Mm-hmm. So going back to Freddy versus Jason, yeah, I, I have one question for you, and I'm pretty sure a lot of my audience members that have the same. How did it feel to kick Freddy's ass? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have a lot of fun with that because you know uh, I don't think the war has been won, but the but but I I think I won that battle. Uh, people always say, "Well, who won?" And I always, I, I won by a head, you know. I, no no pun intended. <laughs> no pun clearly intended. And uh, uh, so yeah, it it was. You know, I didn't know how special it was till really after the after we had finished making the movie. And uh, started doing some promotional work for it. And Robert and I were at a uh, uh, radio station in, uh, uh, down in California. And we came out and there was about 15, 20 people waiting on the other side of the gate. Uh, because they knew, they found out that we were there. And uh, and I guess that was the moment I really realized, you know, what a big deal was to to put on the mask and uh, and be Jason. It is it is is had to be an honor because anyone who can play an iconic role such as Jason is a legend in my book. I don't care who you are. Yeah. If if you're not Kane Hodder, who gives a crap? I mean, you got to play Jason Voorhees. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I'd worked on number eight and yeah, uh, I, had no clue. You know, it was just another uh, job for me uh, at the time. And uh, then when. Uh, I got Freddy versus Jason to play Jason. My family members actually started to contact me. Have you gone online to see, you know, this is kind of a big deal. People are really excited about this and, and it's causing some controversy and, and uh, because I replaced Kane and, and uh, I, I didn't really look, I didn't really pay attention to it all. I'm not a big social media, you know, uh, person. I'm not on any of the uh, social medias. Um, So actually seeing people so excited about it was what really connected uh, you know, my brain to the fact that hey, you're playing Jason. <laughs> it, it's it's a great movie. It's um it's it's got some comedy parts in it, which I think are great. Is that they, yeah. how they how they mix that up a little bit? Um, so you're a gigantic six foot five, and I, I believe that by far I think you're the tallest person to play Jason Voorhees right now. So. Yeah, I uh, well, I'm I'm actually six six, and I got to count every inch because uh, Derek Mears is awfully close. I have a picture of he, he and I together, and uh, you know Derek and I are pretty close to the same height. So, but I think technically, yes, I'm still the <laughs> tallest, Jason. So something you can brag about later on. It's like, <laughs> no, well, you, you got to go to these fine details, you know, to try and separate yourself. All the other guys did, you know, such a great job uh, playing Jason, and and uh, we have some fun, you know, uh, over that. There's, uh, you know, the fans certainly have their favorites and everything, and it's fun to hear them uh, discuss, you know, the where's and why they pick their Jason. Yeah, exactly. I had the exact same conversation with Brad Laurie a couple of days ago. Oh yeah, how he got to play Michael Myers. I don't care who you are, but you got to play an iconic role that everybody knows. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that right there it put, makes you a, a legend in my book, in my opinion. <laughs> so I don't care as long as you can do it, you can do it, and if you can pull it off, fantastic. Yeah. There's no reason to complain about it. So no, it was, uh, it was, it was so much fun to do. Uh, I think I, I, I because I had so little uh, responsibility other than to the fans. Uh, you know, as a stunt coordinator, you're responsible for the safety of everybody on the set, and. Uh, you know, you have to take you take that very seriously, and and uh, getting to play Jason was so much fun. Um, it, it was playing, uh, yeah. and I, you know, hopefully that comes across that I had a good time doing it too. If it was me in that situation, I'd just be thinking to myself, "Yeah, I'm Jason. Now what, motherfuckers?" <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny when you put on costumes because I've done a lot of costume stuff. I call it I call them suit jobs. Uh-huh. Uh, cause you're wearing a, a, a werewolf suit or a Sasquatch suit or, uh, you know, a robot suit. And I've done all that. And when you put them on, they, 
they help create the character. And so when you put on the Jason costume, you know, you take it helps you take on the persona and get into character. And uh, and people see it. You know, we kind of straighten up a little bit more. You get into the Jason posture, and and uh, uh, it helps transform you. My my ego is too big. I've been bragging about it for years. Like, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you know I wear a mask, so I'm <laughs> always surprised when people uh, recognize me and stuff. So it, uh, but it's it it it's. It's been great. It's been uh, really nice to uh, be a part of. So while working um, with the younger generation in in the movie Freddy vs. Jason, it's like all these actors that people really don't know because they're not old school actors like you've seen like in the other Nightmare on Elm Street movies and the other Friday right. 13th movies. Well, with the exception of Robert England. So what is it like working with Robert? Is he, is he a really cool guy or is he just like... Ugh? No, Robert really... Im- braces playing freddie and uh he was so welcoming to me when i came on board and uh even... so we were talking about we were talking about what it was like to work with robert and uh he, what a sweetheart he really was to me and uh when we went out to promote the movie uh everybody recognizes him everywhere you go and uh, he knew that I hadn't had a lot of experience, you know, going out and meeting the public and speaking in public. And and uh, he kind of just led the way and was really like a, just a, like a big brother to me. And I got to uh, meet his wife, Nancy, and uh, we just all got along really well. And, and uh, the promotion for the biggest promotion we did for it was the Vegas, uh, uh, the Vegas show where Robert and I dressed up in character and they introduced us like two fighters and <laughs> awesome. we had a huge audience <laughs> turnout and it just came off really, really well. And, uh, other than that, what the first time I ever saw the movie was with Robert in a, in an open field. And I think it was Austin, Texas. And, uh, they had a big barbecue day camp for the Freddie and Jason fans. And then at night on a big screen, they, uh, they showed the movie and it was the first time that, that I had seen the whole movie together and there was 2000 people in this uh, field uh eating barbecue and watching the movie and it was just fantastic to see the fan response uh and how much they loved the movie and then we did a q and a after which was the first time i ever spoke to an audience uh you know about the movie and stuff and robert was there holding my hand the whole time and and uh went off really well and and uh, yeah i just can't say enough about robert and, and uh and how great he treated me. He does seem like a really cool guy. And um, uh, there's a rumor that I heard that you actually went to a convention in character to show your confidence of playing the Jason Voorhees role. I can't say that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I don't remember ever doing that. Um, you know, the, the hard part about... I was, I was, the only thing about the role was I went in to interview for the coordinating job on the movie and uh, the producer asked me if I wanted to audition to play Jason, which surprised me. I, I automatically thought that Kane was coming up. So uh, doing the, uh, the test uh, was, was the hard part. Once I had the role, you know, I had the role, so I didn't have anything to prove. So I, I don't remember that. I think that might be uh, an internet story. <laughs> Well, it was under IMDb profile, so I just said, like, oh, I'll ask about yeah. that, see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> There's a few things on there that, that other people might have put on there that aren't quite true, I'm sure. I, I remember seeing a, a one or two movies on there that I somebody put on my IMDb page, but I never worked on them. So <laughs> It's like, must be another Ken Kinzer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I, that's the thing, too, is that there's people out there uh, on Instagram, I think, and and Facebook that are pretending to be me because I'm not out there. So they pretend to be me. Um, and uh, so, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I think that's that's a, an internet story. <laughs> okay, so hopefully this one isn't. I also read that um, there's, there's like a statement that you made. That the hardest thing you went through for performing as Jason was sinking into the lake. Yeah, it was. So we were filming in a tank and the, they have to murky up the water you know, sometimes they'll use uh, milk to make the water look murkier. And then, of course, you have to put in tons of 
uh, uh, chlorine to uh, keep people from getting skin diseases and stuff yeah. like that in the water. And uh, Ronnie, you wanted me to sink into the lake with with my eye open because uh, the mask actually had a fake eye on one side. So I could, the only thing you ever see of my whole body is one eye. <laughs> and I had to, Ronnie wanted me to keep that open as I sank into the water. And after a couple of takes, your eyes are just burning. You've got yeah. all the shit that's in the water in your eye, plus a heavy dose of chlorine. And that was, that was really painful. Um, but that, and that was about the hardest thing I, you know, I had to do on Freddy versus Jason. Uh, I, I did have a stunt double, Glenn Ennis, who got to do the only stunt I really wanted to do in the whole movie, which was the fire gag in the cornfield. Uh, Cause I knew that would get a nominated for a yeah. world stuntman's award and uh, should have won. Glenn should have won that one. Uh, but um, no, it was it, so that, you know, that tells you how hard I had to actually work on the show. It was uh, the rest of the stuff was so much fun. Um, you can't really call it work. That's true. It's it's like a hobby, I guess. <laughs> you know, well, hobby. you know, they say if you do something you love, you never work a day in your life. And yeah, uh, you know, I just I loved going in and putting on the costume. And uh, what, Brian Singer, very famous director, was working on a movie in Vancouver, and we're shooting out at Bunsen Lake. And uh, I had just worked on, I think it was an X Men, uh, with him. And uh, but I didn't think he would know who I was anyway. Uh, he turns up out at Bunsen Lake, which is about a 45, 50 minute drive from Vancouver, with a small entourage of of uh, people and i get this message on the radio saying brian singer's here he wants to he wants to see you he wants to say hello and i'm like what so i come out of the trailer and i'm not in my in the jason outfit and i walk out and i meet him and you could just see you know everybody kind of just deflate because i wasn't in the costume and <laughs> they, like, oh, they, wanted see, they wanted they wanted <laughs> to see jason so i said give me a minute i'll go back to the trailer and i'll put on the costume so i Went back to my trailer. I threw the costume on. I walked around them so they didn't see me coming. So they're looking off towards the trailers, expecting me to come that way. And I walked up behind them in character, and they lit up like a Christmas tree. I mean, they were little <laughs> kids going, oh, that is so awesome. I love this costume. Look at the hair. And they're like, you know, I was like a mannequin wearing Jason. <laughs> and they just went crazy over it. Uh, so that was another big tell to get a, you know, a big director like that. Yeah. Coming all the way out to Bunsen Lake because he wanted to see Jason. Uh, that tells you a little something. It does. I bet that felt great too. So yeah, that's all. That's amazing. Were there any other tough scenes that was hard for you to do in the movie? Like the the, the, the iconic fight scene at the end with Freddy Krueger. Was that hard to do? Or was that just like a, a day at the beach for you? You know what? Because I I grew literally grew up doing fight scenes and stuff like that. So it wasn't anything new to me. And and uh, but. What I did love was just seeing how the fight scene was evolving because you you read it in a script, but then you see how it's all set up on set, and uh, you 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 know as you shoot it, you see how it's going to be put together and stuff. And you know if anybody ever asked me what my favorite part of the movie is, it's got to be the the fight scene at the end. That's what everybody's waiting for, and they really delivered on that. And and part of the uniqueness of that was the fact that Ronnie Yu is a Hong Kong director. You know, he added a flavor to the sauce there that that uh, you know a North American director uh, probably wouldn't have done. And uh, because he's, you know, everybody said, "Well, how is Freddie going to fight Jason physically? He's so much smaller." But Ronnie, being a martial artist, knows it's not always the big guy that wins. You know, the small, quick guy has has advantage in speed. Right, so right. He he tweaked that fight scene, and it just came off so well. Um, yeah, I don't know if a North American director would have pulled that off. Yeah, that was really well coordinated. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know it was fun to do the burning house scene, the scene where I grab Freddie and run him through the windows, and and uh, I mean that was that was all just pure fun, right? Because you know they had him on a cable, so that I get to you know play really strong and, yeah. and uh, drag him out of the thing and throw him across into the other building and. Um, that's that's all fun stuff to do, you know. Yeah, like I say, it's one of my favorite movies because it, it's 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 entertaining. I mean, it, it's yeah. it's fun to watch. What and... they did was they 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 had a script, and they had like ten scripts, right? This was the one they settled on. But 
if you were a fan there was and you had seen all the movies uh they paid homage to those fans who knew every detail about both franchises but if you hadn't seen e either of the franchises you could go to that movie and still be entertained by it not knowing all the backstory because they give you just enough and uh, to draw people in and um I mean, it's generational. Uh, it, it really amazes me that here we are, you know, 2023, 20 years later, and uh, this movie is still attracting new audiences. You know, Yeah, because I believe um, the director may have aimed this one towards the younger generation because you have these young teenagers in the movies that, that no one, like, hardly recognizes. But, you know, but you got Jason and Freddie in it, two major icons, yeah. which bring the movie to life. So, right. And then you know, now they're creating more movies because that movie stems. Those other movies stem from Jason versus Freddy, and it, it's it's creating more stuff. So yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's interesting to see what new monsters will you know because it you know we had Frankenstein and the werewolf and Dracula and and then you have your you know Freddy Jason Pinhead Mike Myers you know sort of era. And you now you're kind of into your uh, uh, alien predator uh, and whatever new monsters come out that that stick with people, um, and it's great to be part of that lineage, you know. Yeah, um, believe it or not, my son's into horror movies a lot too. And I just asked him one day, "What is your favorite horror movie?" And without even the hesitation, he said, "Freddy vs. Jason." No way! <laughs> oh, well, well, that's, that's fantastic. I was like, good choice, son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Give him a pat on the back for me. <laughs> well, that's all I got. Thank you so much for joining me today, Ken. I really do appreciate it. You're and, welcome. Um, I, I wish you weren't retiring because, oh, man, it breaks my heart. If it's... <laughs> well, I'm not saying if they if they gave me the call to suit up again for uh, Jason, I'm not saying no. <laughs> that's what Brad told me the other day. He's like, if you were given the chance to like Michael, he's like, without any hesitation, I would do it in a heartbeat. So, yeah, I think. It, it like I say, it's uh, it was great to be a part of, and uh, it, you know, we'll, uh, Brad and I, uh, you know, you, Brad and I know each other very well. I'm, I'm assuming you probably know that, but uh, uh, we talk about it a lot, and, and uh, it, it, we were both so lucky to be a part of, you know, those franchises. And uh, hey, we we do it again. I know we would. I hope so, because I would yeah. love to see another Jason movie. With you starring it, because you're the, by far you're the tallest one, which is more intimidating. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, it'd be very cool for me. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for joining me yeah. today. I really appreciate it, and I, I wish you the best in your career. I really do. Thank you, uh, Ben. You take uh, care. Have a have a good Sunday. Uh, you too, sir. All right.